So it sounds like this planetary defense is going to be a big part of the future of space exploration over the next five and ten years. Is there any other big milestones on the horizon for space exploration within five or ten years? Space programs are most of them discussed on a 20 year basis. And uh, in 2011, you see, we are aware to see practically what, what will happen in 2017 or 18. Because uh, when you're designing a space mission, a normal space mission lasts from uh, 7 to 15 years. So this is uh, the challenge in space. Actually, among the most important issues uh, are, let's say, for example, to put uh, something on the moon to try to benefit of the microgravity, the, the vacuum, the low temperature conditions to develop some industry there, a small laboratory. So this means a small station, permanent station on the moon. The other issue is also very interesting, the human the human uh, flight to Mars, which might be possible in the next future. Actually, the program is not concrete. The program is not uh, already developed because it's very expensive. Other interesting issues uh, are related to uh, basic science. The LISA mission, LISA means uh, Laser Interferometry Gravitational Observatory, three satellites, the, the triangle form a triangle with uh, an edge of uh, around 5 million kilometers, and by means of laser interferometry, there is a hope to detect low-frequency gravitational wave possibly to be produced by supernova explosions and by binary systems of neutronic stars, of course, the so-called pulsars. Some other issues include a network of uh, monitoring uh, most of the effects which might be dangerous for the Earth. Some technological issues include new concepts in uh, spaceflight as uh, the space elevator is a system for the orbiting. In the same time, most of the scientists are interested on uh, how to be able to get out of uh, the solar system and to reach uh, other stars. So maybe this will be the most ambitious development in the next maybe 20 years or more to try to reach another star. A lot of people argue that there is so much down here on Earth that needs solving that we should concentrate on, on sorting that out first and then go to space. What is your personal opinion on this debate? You see, we are in space. So the planet Earth is uh, some kind of a space station. It's a tiny planet with uh, life support. This means an atmosphere with uh, limited resources and with uh, not very strong uh, shielding towards uh, other cosmic threats. So uh, we are in, uh, in space and uh, the human civilization is uh, just at its beginning. This beginning might be considered the moment when uh, the people processing information were more in quantity and number uh, than the people, who, the workers, let's say, and the, the direct workers. Okay. Presently, the, our civilization is based more or less on information processing, and this is uh, new. This is a structure. This is this means other way to think, and uh, definitely we should uh, take care of uh, the planet. Solving the planetary issues. This is uh, a problem of uh, mentality and not a problem of uh, investment, mainly. And uh, this planet is uh, connected in uh, all uh, its uh, issues with uh, the universe. You cannot uh, disassociate them. And this means that uh, investment in this universe is extremely important. Day by day we have new information, we have new discoveries. For the astronomers it's clear they can uh, notice how many interesting shapes, galaxies, other uh, different uh, forms of cosmical structure uh, they discover day by day. But you should not uh, put me <laughs> to this question, question to me, <laughs> if space exploration is uh, 
more important than Earth exploration. On the contrary, you're the perfect person to ask this question. What drew you to studying space? You see, if you cannot uh, reach other planet or other star, uh, which is physical, you can reach uh, them uh, by scientific imagination. This is uh, science, and uh, science is extremely interesting. It is an activity which uh, might give you much satisfaction. You see, I took my PhD in uh, theoretical physics in uh, quantum structure of uh, space-time. So I was able at that time to deal with many universes at the time, mathematically speaking. And uh, then all other things were easy. They were, they went on the, on an already discovered uh, structure. So this is some kind of a joke, but, uh, be able to develop something in the space activity, it's quite difficult. At the first uh, sight, it is easy because you should be aware of, uh, some, of a bit of many things at a time. But just uh, believe me that it is quite difficult to uh, develop, uh, even the smallest parts of uh, a satellite or a launcher, or to be able to uh, organize communication and networking uh, between uh, several tens of satellites, and uh, to be able to launch an object from the Earth to reach small uh, comets at uh, six million kilometers distance, and to make this uh, small robot to land on that uh, comet. So it is not so easy, but it's feasible. And uh, that kind of activities, they bring uh, sometimes immediate, sometimes longer-term spin-offs to the society. This is great. Uh, well, it is. And this is uh, the practical reason for space activities uh, are supported by governments, and not only by governments. You see, the turnover of the space activities is larger than uh, 300 billion per year in this moment including uh, also the non-commercial activities, including military activities. But we should think that uh, meteorology is not possible without satellites, that uh, all forms of television, they are possible due to the satellites, that the navigation systems, almost everybody has a GPS sensor in his pocket, and the map. And there are such applications, uh, they cannot be uh, realized on the Earth. So, at the same time, space is driving industries, is driving uh, high technology. In Europe, we say that uh, one euro invested in ESA means other 10 euros around in uh, that country which invests. And that's true. Well... Well, thank you so much for um, for accepting to be our guest. We will wrap up now and wanted to ask you if there is anything um, that you would like to say to our listeners. To be confident in the future of the humankind and uh, to look at the universe and uh, smile. Do not be scared of uh, any possible dangerous things from space activities. And thank you beautiful absolutely beautiful so as always we need to finish off by saying thanks to all of the people who've contributed to make this podcast possible first off um, new zealand science media center for allowing us the use of their podcast recording equipment and thank you to the amazing composer rian sheehan for uh, letting us using the intro and outro themes to the kiwi space foundation and to the world space week association and finally, a huge thanks to our guests for today, Dr. Marius Piso, for enthralling us with all sorts of tales of the ESA's various different endeavors and for giving us confidence in the future of humankind. See you next time. See you next time.